Good afternoon and welcome to a match of Dota 2 for which we have been waiting for quite a while. And it is finally here. It is a match between Virtus Pro and Fnatic Raid Call, Fnatic RC. And it is a match for Star Series Season 3. And once again, as I do every night for the Star Ladder matches that I cast, I am not an official caster. I'm casting this using the in-game ticket that I bought so by Dota TV for official cast. You can go check out own TV and you will be able to see them there. However, for this match, there is no official English cast. So um, that is a disclaimer that I uh, that I use. <laughs> now let's uh, let's get back to the game. So we have got ourselves some banouts. I have to say I'm not really surprised by these. We have got a Lycan, Darkseer, and Naga Siren. Uh, the Lushrak is a hero that we, if we, if he, if he's not banned out, he's usually picked up as first or, or first and second for the other team. So I'm not surprised that he gets banned out here. Fnatic RC does not want to pick them, pick him up themselves, and they do not want to play it. We still have, of course, Rubik in the pool, uh, which is a hero that would be picked up as well if, uh, if, if he makes it through the bans in this case. And of course, there is the standard. Uh, well, I'm not so sure if it's standard, but the Templar Assassin and the Tidehunter usually uh, get picked up within the first two slash three picks lately per team. Uh, but we see we see a Rubik making it through. We have a uh, Brute Mother banned out for a Fnatic RC and an Anti Mage banned out for Virtus Pro, and they probably knew that the Rubik would be ba would be picked up by a Fnatic Raid Call, and I would not be surprised if they pick up the Morphling. Uh, because if they now let it go through and give it to Fnatic, there we go, then then they would be in a tough position because that anti that already is the semi-counter towards the Morphling, or at least late game versus late game, is already out of the pool. So they have already banned out that counter for themselves now, since they did pick up the Morphling, they also pick up the Chen, ensuring that they have that solid jungle hero. Of course, Enchantress and Enigma are still on the pool if they want to go for something like that. However, uh, they don't just yet. They pick up the Invoker and the Lone Druid. I have to say, we have seen Lone Druid versus Morphling before, and he can win. But lately, he has been falling slightly out of favor because it is fairly easy to shut him down and delay his items, delay his uh, Templar his radiance. And there's the Templar system. That was actually the one that I was expecting on Fnatic RC, but it was Virtus Pro that picks it up. So something that we see a lot, uh, we see Morphling farming while Templar Assassin is uh, distracting the opponent team by taking kills and of course depending on how well Morphling is doing on this lane he might uh, jump out of the lane to get some farm um, from heroes and team fights as well of course. Uh, but of course Lone Druid is potentially a jungler not that strong as uh, the Chen. We might see him do it though but in theory uh, Fnatic RC, Rubik, Invoker, Lone Druid, all three of those could take a solo lane. Uh, so banning out against them might be slightly difficult as as Virtus Pro, they don't know what Rubik is yet for Fnatic RC. They don't know if it's a support, if it's going to be a solo lane, or if he is. Uh, well, if he if he is a support, then obviously they don't need to ban out supports anymore. And if he is a mid lane, you might want to ban out some supports. But I'm curious to see what Virtus Pro thinks that Rubik is going to be. I do think in this case that he will be the support, especially since, um, well. Since I think Invoker is going to be taking up a solo lane and Lone Druid pr probably as well. We have a Sand King ban out coming off on Fnatic RC. We still have a Tidehunter in the pool, by the way. And of course, Templar Assassin counters, or counter, I should say, just one because Oshrak is already out there. The Venomancer was still in the pool, and I say was because I'm kind of expecting Virtus Pro to ban that one out in uh, the next two bans. So we'll see if they go for that. And one thing that I have to note. Uh, Lone Druid, if he does get his farm up, if he is fast enough with that Radiance, the Radiance is of course a counter towards the Refraction from the Templar Assassin as well. And we have the Enigma ban out first of Virtus Pro, denying that hero for the jungles of uh, Fnatic RC. Uh, we still of course have the Enchantress in if they want to go for that. But uh, we'll see if they actually uh, do that, or if Virtus Pro is going to ban that one out. And I'm still kind of expected to see Venom and ban out, but we'll, we'll 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 wait for it. We'll see how that goes. In the meantime, it's going to be Fnatic RC who is having the last ban of the game. And what will they ban? Will they ban a Tidehunter? Hunter? Because 
or will they pick that up, want to pick that up themselves? I mean, they burn out the Sand King, indicating they do not want to fight that team fight. Five seconds remaining. And Enigma now already out of the pool as well. Earthshaker not so common. So Tyrant are still basically the only real good team fight here, still in the pool. So they might want to pick that one up. But if they don't want to pick it up, I do think it's a good thing to ban him out. Because right, right now, you see TA, is, she's going to be solo. Morphling, potentially solo. Ten with the uh, solo lane still left to be picked up by Virtus Pro and a support in that case. And that support could very well be a tight hunter together with that Morphling. Dire team ban. And then they're not banning out any uh, any real solo lanes like Windrunner, Queen of Pain, Beastmaster, Puck, all still in the pool. If Virtus Pro wants to go for that. But the ban out the Shadow Demon, so still support ban out that they don't want to face, don't want to have that with the Morphling. And of course, the Soul Catcher is a pretty uh, pretty annoying spell to fight if you're a lone druid. You want to be that tanky, and if you get a Soul Catcher on you, you're just not that tanky anymore. So they don't want to face that one. I'm really curious, because right now, I mean, if you look at the success rate of the Tidehunter over the last couple of matches, I believe that his success rate is pretty, pretty big. And no Venomans are banned out, but the Ninja Prophet banned out, but Venomans are therefore instantly picked up. I mean, I mean, kind of saw it coming. I was expecting it to get banned out, but you know, if you don't ban it, it will get picked up. Also means no Tidehunter just yet. I do think Virtus Pro would be uh, good with it, but what well, my point was Virtus of uh, Tidehunter... Is a is a very successful hero lately. Has a high success rate, high win rate, and does just have that impact. Able to turn team fights around. And if if you have already a morphling and templar Five assassin, so you you are secured for late game, and your mid game is not too bad either. And if you then have secured team fight as well, there's not that much that your opponent can do against you. Even though they do have a pretty good pushing lineup and some turtle as well, but. It is just uh, very hard to fight that. I have to say, there's already three green heroes up on the side of Fnatic RC. So the Tide Hunter would fit in perfectly, and the Invoker would then be the leader over the greens. An Age of Prophet, also a green hero, got banned out. I mean, another hero that they just, uh, well, could potentially be in the jungle. But is it is annoying to face. I mean, you don't want to get split pushed. It's just, it's just that simple. So that's probably the reasoning behind it. Because it could still fit into the lineup of Fnatic RC as well. And we still don't really know how they're going to lane it. I mean, we have seen uh, Asian teams running their lineup of Lone Druid on a trial lane just so that Lone Druid can farm securely. And the Rubik and the Venomaz would be supporting him, and in which case Venomaz RC still needs a solo lane. We have a Bane pickup from Virtus Pro, so that means that it's not going to be a tight hunter, at least not for Virtus Pro. Unless they want to solo lane him, which we have been seeing as well, so it might still be a possibility. But Bane combined with the Morphling will be a, a, a dual lane for Virtus Pro in this game. Let's see what Fnatic RC can do against this. I mean... The, wow, okay. <laughs> they pick up the Faceless Void, so Antimage is no longer there. They didn't want to go for the Luna, which is also a hero that we've seen recently uh, taking it up against the hard carries uh, of... Dota 2 and uh, Faceless Void still in the pool, so that is gonna be uh, the case. And I have to say, I kind of like it because a Chronosphere only the Lone Druid's bear is not really that effective in it. But then, if he has the Radiance, that of course he is, he can still have that aura. But the rest of the heroes can all hit stuff in there as well as you know, AoE stuff going through while they're in the Chronosphere. There is a Poison Nova, there's a Fade Bolt, Tornadoes, EMP, Deafening Blast, Meteors, you name it, they all have it. So, based on team fight, I would put it into favor of Fnatic RC. And they picked up a hero that has team fight. And late game carry, so I do. I really like the pickup. I really think that they they made the right choice there. Uh, if it's gonna work out, we'll still have to see, of course, because a Templar Assassin uh, mid game, Fnatic RC Beast cannot Master. do that much against it. And now with the Beastmaster there as well, which will be the solo lane for Fnatic RC. Uh, sorry, for Virtus Pro. Beastmaster is also one of those heroes that that is just around level six. Well, at level six, he has his roar. The and uh, yeah, with that roar, he'll try to go around and ganking stuff. And now they don't only rely on the Templar Assassin to get that momentum in the game, but Bane, Beastmaster, and Templar Assassin, all three heroes, are pretty good with ganks. And Chen completes that pretty well with uh, coming out of the jungle with creeps, of course, as well. And if they get a successful gank with that Chen around, you have a tower down pretty fast to get some extra gold for your entire team. So I do think mid game. 
We might see Fela Garcia being put in a tough position, but it will all depend on how Francis Vogt is doing, how he's going to get out of the uh, out of the mid game. That is, at the same time, they do have a Vedomancer, which uh, can shut down the Templar system fairly well, and we have seen that being done before. And we have actually Beastmaster. He picked up boots first, something that you see normally when he is on a long lane, just to be able to th that he gets away battle. shortly. And if you're wondering why are we switching around from side to side, it is because uh, I am in a spectator client, and I still have to select free camera. So that is uh, why. So let's see who is playing what. We're jump ourselves over to the radiant side first, where Fnatic RC is getting ready to leave their base. We have Fnatic RC today playing with two stand-ins. Uh, one of them is Admiral Bulldog. He's going to be on a long route, going towards that long lane, going to try to pull the lane back with his bear from behind the tower that way towards his own tower so that he can get some secure farm. Uh, we have the uh, Invoker going towards the mid lane, already picked up a blaze of attack to make uh, those last hits a bit easier for him. And uh, we have the Francis Void going towards the mid lane. Oh, I still have to say the name, sorry. It is uh, Shankles playing the Invoker. <laughs> And it is a face avoid going towards the bottom lane, and he is being played by Era that leaves two heroes. One of them is No Tail on the Venomancer, and I am expecting him to go help out the Invoker in case uh, this guy is here, which he is. So uh, the dual lane will go towards the way, should go towards the way of Fnatic. And the last but not least is not a Hex. Uh, he is going to be playing the Rubik, and he is also a stand in for Fnatic RC in this game, and he looks to be going top. Well, actually, he's just going to ward probably and then go bottom to help out the Faceless Void, because Faceless Void, even though he has, does have that escape, he's just not that good at uh, solo farming, even though I have to say, versus the Beastmaster, could still be uh, it could still be possible, definitely. And talking about Beastmaster, we can already see uh, Santa on the Beastmaster for Virtus Pro up on the dire side. He's going to be taking up the bottom lane. Mid lane, we saw Crazy already on a Sampler Assassin. We have seen him play that before as well. And uh, we see KSI on the bane, and he'll be going towards the top lane where he will be supporting Airman, or otherwise known as Illidan. He'll be moving towards the top lane, leaving just a Chen to be played by NS, the last player for Virtus Pro, as we're waiting for him to get reconnected into this game. And he'll, of course, be going into that jungle. And, uh, Admin Roll, does, did he mistype his name? Admin Roll, no, I see he typed it properly. You typed it properly, sorry. Uh, so yeah, once once again, so like I said, I am customized by Dota TV, so there's no delay on my stream, uh, because there's already delay in Dota TV, and that also means that I see the chat like uh, in real time, which means that I might be more inclined to comment on it, so uh, that is uh, what might distract me sometimes, and I'll try to keep that to a minimum. Apologize for it. Apologies for it already in advance. And we've been picking up Sentry Wars just in case there's going to be wars on the top lane helping out that lone Druid, which there probably will be if uh, if Rubik is going to go towards the top lane. We'll see. Though we have now NS uh, reconnecting back into the game, so we will be starting shortly, I hope. I did not see them say anything. Uh, apart from the retry, I was just disconnected from the tour, and I'm just going to post that for a second. The retry got disqualified from Star Ladder. All games are death wins for opposing teams. Which also means that we're going to have a bit less games today than uh, we thought we would. So uh, keep that in mind as well. Uh, so, let's see how they're going to lane this. We're going to actually have a Venomancer moving towards uh, the bottom lane as well. And that actually kind of surprises me. I mean, Templar Assassin versus Invoker. Invoker will probably be getting some last hits, but it doesn't shut the Templar Assassin down. And we all know how Templar Assassin can get when she is not shut down. We have seen that before. And I have to answer someone. There we go. Venomizer took the wards over from uh, the Rubik, by the way. Rubik no longer has words, and it was Venomizer that placed the ward in the ancient spot, making so sure that the Beastmaster's begin. plan, which he probably had to pull the ancient to get some secure farm, will be uh, put in some trouble. 
and will be resulting in him uh, missing a couple of seconds with that. Gale doesn't hit, Telekinesis does, but with that missed Gale, they cannot go for it first blood on this uh, Chen that just uh, was able to walk away from that one. Can you evoke her? I mean, we have to, we have to keep track on this Templar Assassin. If she's not going to get shut down, we will... I, I'm just worried. Okay, hello Venomancer. Thank you for helping me make my my guesstimate on the lanes a bit better again. Because he is going to be going into this middle lane and we will be helping the Invoker. And that way they should definitely be winning the lane. I don't know exactly if that's going to be enough. They really kind of have to, have to kill him with the uh, Gale helping out. But uh, we'll see. We're going to actually see No-Tail pulling here to uh, get some extra farm so he doesn't eat up too much farm of that uh, of that Invoker in the mid lane. In the meantime, Ira in the meantime versus that uh, Beastmaster should be fine. He uh, cleared the trees out though, the Beastmaster did, making sure that he can see the entire forest so that there's not going to be any ganks because he doesn't have any wars on this bottom lane. So he will be uh, will be wondering about that and I think he just noticed that there is no creeps there for him and there's sentry wards already. Uh, but he has to place it on the other side, he has to place it like there. There we go. And now he sees it and now he can destroy it as well. Uh, if he placed it on the other side, of course, the uh, creep spawn would still be blocked by that, but then by his own sentry ward. So he only misses one stack, sort of two stacks of his uh, of his ancients, and will still be able to get farm through that. And we see actually Venom has a pooling in this middle lane, making sure that uh, he ate his way through the trees, and that he uh, is helping out his uh, invoker, keeping the lane in check. And helping out, of course, this guy. He is not going to have an easy time in this middle lane. He's uh, got five last hits, but that's all from the first half. The first two creep waves, I believe, right now is going to be a lot more difficult for him to get those last hits. Hastrun on the Beastmaster, who's going to clear out some creeps here. He has uh, found a nice uh, way of farming there. And he's going to be able to pick up more as well if he wants to. Waiting for his next axis, even though he doesn't have the mana. No deal does have mana, though. But he doesn't want to go for that. He still has haste on there and knows that he wouldn't be able to get it anyway. But this Beastmaster is, uh, is not really all that, that fun for No Tail to deal with. The means of Cold Snap, but there's Refraction. will be fine. Crazy stays alive and Bear is going to try to get more creeps coming out of uh, of the opponents and team. But he don't, I don't think he's going to get them anytime soon. Because they're being pulled constantly. And of course he was able to pull his own lane as well, making sure that they just stayed back. But he can't even pick up the farm more experience for those neutrals. He's just too far away. He's level 1 still. He's got 41 experience. It's uh, not a very happy panda. Bear. Not a very happy bear. That is. Dyer's yeah. top tower is under attack. Anyways. It is uh, going to be pushing the lane slightly because still the lanes are just going to get pulled. And it is uh, a tough position for the bear. And that is what I talked about. I mean, that is what could be devastating if the bear is not going to get farm up in time. Oh, this might be turning into a fair slot. Fade will go through. Telekinesis is there as well. More right clicks. Is there going to be a lucky bash? No bash just yet. Is there going to be another time? Less? Not yet. He only needs one more hit. Six HP left, but they are not going to get a no first blood for Fnatic RC on this lane for now. Oh, and, and he is not lucky with that bash. He is not lucky with that bash. If that would have been a bash, that would have been a kill. It's just harassment though, they can't really go in, but it will at least pop off the refraction. And there it goes. Cold snap as well. Yeah, I don't really change that shankles. You don't want to get too much uh, involved there. And we have got a rotation. Bane is, uh, well, rotation I say. Bane is just making sure that the bear keeps occupied. Perhaps he wasn't able to pull the lane back behind the tower. Uh, however, the lane still managed to push out, but this time it is with the Chen. It is with some skeleton warriors and it will make Lone Druid pull back. He's got 53 experience right now in total. But still, he is uh, no, still not a happy panda. As he is, uh, he is getting some last hits with that bear right now. But Morphling will make sure that the bear is forced to back off as well. And they may be even getting, be getting this tower right here. As there is a support coming in, as the Venomancer. He's gonna try to help out. He doesn't have any wars just yet, but might be able to leave a gale. And it does hit on the Chen. Uh, but they will not chase, obviously, they're outnumbered. In the meantime, no damage harassing this invoker, but no Venomancer here to help out, so no kill up on the Templar Assassin. And melt damage is just not enough to kill off an invoker that's gone quest, quest wax, because he is just way too tanky. He already has his face boots. 
I like the Templar Assassin. I mean, the Templar Assassin is 15 for 4, with the Invoker 18 for 3. The difference is not that much as you might expect from a possible dual lane with the Venomizer there as well, and with lanes getting denied as well at Quick Waves. Tower will drop here on the top lane. Radiant First tower going tower down in the fallen. game, going down towards Virtus Pro in favor of them. And in the meantime, five minutes in, five and a half almost, and we still have not had our first blood. And that is a long time to go without first blood. But then again, if we look at the lanes, there's not really any lane that you would say, wow, that's a strong lane with some nice combination going on. It's just for, for, for Virtus Pro, it is waiting until the levels are there. I mean, they need a roar. They need those face boots no. and level 6 upon the TA. And they need Morphling to farm. That is basically their three levels. And of course Chen just farming want to have that uh, hand of God in case they're gonna get team fought. But that is the goal for Fnatic RC. When that uh, Templar Assassin as well as the Beastmaster get those levels up. And they're gonna start to roam around to try to get ganks. And at that time we'll see... Uh, we'll see Fnatic RC in a slightly tough position. Because like I said... They don't have the same kind of heroes. They can stop push-ins from happening with that tornado, with that EMP, helping out pushing back the lanes. They can slow everybody down with that gale. They can pop up refraction and stop ganks probably with that venomancy in his in the uh, in their tracks. But oh, gale hit centerboard as well. Telekinesis, Ruby helping out. This might be turning into a first blood for Kinetic RC. Another word being placed. That's an observer ward, by the way, from the Radiant side. And I will take him down. And the Evoker, Shankles, picking up the first blood, taking the advantage over the middle lane. And that is something that they have to continue doing, because otherwise the Templar Assassin will get out of control at some point. And she did manage to pick up her face boost before dying. So that is at least something. But he did give away first blood to his opponent on the lane. In the meantime, nice ancient stack here by the Beastmaster, so he will have his uh, golden experience up fairly soon as well. He picked up a soul ring already. I mean, he's level 3 only, but with these ancients, he is probably going to be level 5, maybe even level 6 after he killed those off. In the meantime, this guy will be facing off against the Morphling. Let's see how they're doing compared to each other. 52 for 26 on Paulus Faceless Void. And the 20, 26 indicating that he is doing a nice job with keeping this lane at, at an equilibrium, making sure that he keeps uh, keeps the lane in check and having the tower help out with these last hits. Of course, if you are a pro player, you know the timings on uh, on which these uh, on which you can last hit these creeps if the tower is hitting them as well. And in the meantime, is the Morphling that is farming against him. Morphling already had that tower going down on the top lane. It's now 44 for 12. And uh, with the tower being down, it is actually easier for Lauren Druid to now get some extra gold. We have another go up on this Templar Assassin, who takes a cold snap. It's gonna go to try to go for the Invoker Trap. The hits, 50% slow up on the Venomance. It gets forced back as well. And he's gonna go down. He is gonna go down. Here comes the face of Void, though. He's gonna be able to pick up the kill. But one for one, it is still a good trade for Fnatic RC, especially since Void picked up that kill. But... I don't think that Venomancer should have died. He could have just... I mean, he turned around at some point while being slowed. If they continued fighting, I think they might have been able to get him down before the Venomancer went down. In the meantime, Telekinesis, Beastmaster, is in trouble, still level 3. There's the time left, and that is gonna be a kill. Another one for the Faces Void. That is 2 for 0, and that is putting Faces Void definitely ahead of that Morphling on the top lane. Even with that gold damage that he, tower, damage, tower gold that he got earlier. In the meantime, go on the mid lane. It is Invoker that's in some trouble. Gonna get harassed by as well the chat as the uh, Templar Assassin. Creep Wave comes in as well, and it looks like they want this tier 1 tower. I have put up net worth, by the way, because with these towers going down, it is just easier to see the net worth, easier to guesstimate what the uh, status is for, all the, for both of these teams without uh, having the last it's in the nice up. And uh, they do get a fair chunk off this tower. Looks like they might be able to defend it though. There goes the down. There goes the trap as well. 50% slow. Gale hits. Something got stolen. Telekinesis is being used as well as the trap being stolen. 50% slow on the TA. And she's not going to be able to get away. A kill for the faces. Void once again. He is everywhere right now. Four heroes of Fnatic RC in this middle lane. And they might be looking to get their own tower. We have a level 9 faces Void. Who's got 3 for 0. Who's got a hand of Midas. And what we normally see is Faceless Void 
getting, you know, they're, they're AFK farming, they're not mingling into any team fights, they're just being able to do their thing, just being last hitting stuff, just, you know, uh, maybe around 25 minutes to 30 minutes, they will do something, and of course if there's going to be fights on his lane, he'll use his Chronosphere, he's going to get ganked, he'll use his Chronosphere, but this Faceless Void is actually playing fairly aggressive for the Faceless Voids that, that we have seen. And I have to say, I kind of, I kind of like it. I kind of like, uh, like the playstyle from from Era in this game. And with that hand of minus, you'll be able to to farm extra fast, and not to forget get extra fast experience as well. He's a level higher than the Morphling right now. Morphling, who's just still last hitting, and he's definitely not doing bad at all compared to that faceless void, but still it is faceless void in favor. And once again, because this lane is pushed out, this lone druid is getting some form. Yes, it is not really something to write home about. It's not that much, but at least it's getting form and levels as he is now level five, which is actually a level lower than the support Rubik who was on the bottom lane. In the meantime, another push in, this time uh, again on the middle lane actually, and this time the tower is already below half HP, so this could very well turn into a tower kill. Were it not that there are three heroes here in this middle lane from Fnatic RC to defend it, and it's actually Lone Druid who is just gonna go into the jungle and uh, farm here. He's realizing that it's stacked though, and that's not good for his bear. Not, uh, n well, a bit too much damage for the bear to take, and I have to say, this is looking pretty impressive for this Beastmaster. If the Radiant would find this, that would have been a, would be a pretty, uh, pretty good, uh, pretty good score, definitely. He's gonna build Tranquil Woods, something that we see more often on Beastmasters, just to be able to uh, to have that extra HP when he gets ganked and can just run back. He's of course tanky enough to stay alive through those assaults, in theory. But he uh, will be able to uh, bottom tower is under attack. to get his health back up afterwards, which is just pretty important. Otherwise, you have to of course walk all the way back to your, to your base, and that's not really what you want to do. Oh, three heroes, they smoked up, they find the TA, gets killed, sent word there as well. There is no escaping for you, Templar Assassin. You are going down and you cannot take anybody with you. It is the lone druid that picks up the kill, finally getting something there as Beastmaster is now scouting out the opponent team. And look at that. If they're gonna be able to get that, even if they're with the five of them, that would be a lot of farm going to the way of Fnatic RC. And they are gonna go for that. Look at that. Ah, they can't you can't really take it up though. The bear might be able to take it up. But it's too much. It's too much right now. Not good enough just yet. Yeah, tornado is gonna scout up the Bane very long Tornado. And there's the Wax Invoker being super fast. Cold snap there, and it is Bane that drops to the Invoker's last hit. And that will be a tier 1 tower, so the towers would therefore be even. Uh, but Morphling like in the meantime harassing the tier 2 slightly. Uh, it might be that Fnatic RC is gonna continue going though. I mean, they have the Chronosphere. They might just use this. It's like, you know what? We feel that we're ahead, and I have to say, it feels like they are ahead indeed. Especially with that six for one kill, and they are ahead on gold as well as uh, as experience, even though not that much as you might expect. But they might just use it to try and get a team fight going. It is the beastmaster that gets scouted out here. Tornado will not pick him up, however. And there is uh, the boar as well, and and the bear taking some damage here. They're gonna try to take this down. They're gonna try to take this gold, and they will be able to uh, make sure that the beastmaster is not gonna get as much roar going off. And they've got everybody up on the high ground. What a play! Chronosphere being put up, but it's only to give people time to get away because this is not very good. At the same time, I mean, of course, <laughs> Virgis Bro cannot really reach them, clears out Suntree so that they are able to back off further, even though, of course, that was not intentional. There's a tree's gone. Bane picks up the kill on the laundry, and Morphling is just gonna stand here and ras no tail until he's dead. And I have to say, that roar! That roar! Santa! If it was planned, even all the better. But yeah, all of a sudden, three hero, two heroes up on the high ground, and luckily for uh, for Fnatic, they were raised here, so they could try to still do something. But that was just a bad fight for them overall, and they're lucky they only lost Lone Druid as well as the better man, so who were indeed the heroes that were stuck up on there. The Chronosphere was not really ideal either, and I could not really do anything with it as well. And there goes the Roshan, and it's Morphling that picks it up. And right now, Morphling is uh, starting to get pretty dangerous. He is going to be building towards his Lincoln Sphere, has it almost complete. Uh, we see Phaedra's Void almost having his Battle Fury, however, but it is, uh, it is, there's needed more. He needs more. And he's now, he should be going back to farming. He spent too much time on lanes without farming, on uh, ganks without farming, on trying to find team fights and pickups and be there for his team. And he's gonna actually hide behind this tier one tower because this is not looking very good for them if 
this push continues with five heroes here of Virtus Pro. This might turn into a tier one tower going towards the way of Virtus Pro. But to stop that, we have everybody of Planet Garcia moving towards the bottom lane as well. So this could be turning into a five on five team fight. However, Phaedra's Void, Chronosphere, still on cooldown just for five se 15 seconds. So it's going to be a Fiend's grip upon that Invoker who cannot really do anything. Four star forward is now going to be safe. Nice uh, roar going off uh, on the Venomancer there with the Invoker backing up. And it is once again Fennec RC that seemingly on the back foot. However, Morphling Fade Ball through and it is Templar setting the pace of the face as Void first. We see a trap again on the Invoker. Slow 50%. It's going to run into the Beastmaster. But TA still gets the last with Venomancer drops. And this is indeed not going very well for Virtus Pro. They lose the ages, that is one thing. And Face of Void, who actually bought back, is going to be here once again. And there is the Chronosphere off cooldown now. Access flies through. There's Bane still trying to do what he can to the Face of Void, but the Face of Void, he leaps forward. He wants to get out. Bear very much slowed. Still alive, 30 HP upon era. Bulldog will probably drop here if he. No! 60 HP! He's staying alive, still has a cell. No deal here to slow down the Morphling. Morphling being entangled as well. Is he going to be able to do something here? He's not moving into strength just yet. I don't think he's all that worried for now. Radiance Trap la latches again. In the meantime, Rubik on the backside picking off the Beastmaster. So they get that. And this is a TA again. It goes melted. This time, no dust. This time, no central wards as we have seen them use before. And do they have something? They need a deafening blast. Oh, oh, oh! Bulldog is going to drop. So he gets it at least that one. That's a deafening blast going to and that is a kill. Fate Bolt picking it up. And that is indeed a double kill going the way towards Rubik. And that is a fight that was actually quite even. And it was a bit messy. And the tower is still standing. I don't think either one of these two teams is really saying, yes, I'm happy that fight took place. Because it wasn't that case. I mean, at least the Morphling didn't die for Virtus Pro, and they did manage to pick off the Faces Void, so that's a good thing for them. At the same time, they lost the TA, they lost a lot of farm time, they lost the Aegis, and they lost a lot of, uh, lo they used to war, they used to feed script, but they, they, ah, uh, not impressed. Not impressed, and we're probably going to see more with this team fight, and it's actually even once more. As it looks to be like this team fight was indeed in favor of Virtus Pro Gold buys at least. I mean they did get one extra kill uh, over over Fnatic RC if I recall correctly. Experience graph, it still it doesn't change that much. It doesn't change that much. 1k difference is really nothing at this stage of the game. 17 minutes in, four staff ready up on the Evoker. We already saw that one before. As well as the Templar Assassin is now building towards the Desolator once to have it finished. So that she can uh, continue doing what she does Radiant best, which is ganking. Is and th this time it looks like the tier 1 tower will drop. Axis will fly, will help our son to doing his job as well as all the creatures from the Chen. And it is the Chen that actually gets lasted on the tower as well. And I do need to take a sip of drink, otherwise I will lose my voice and I do not want that. Are we following another hex in the meantime? There we go. So let's, uh, well, that is zero. We already saw that one. 2k now in favor still of the die, but it doesn't feel that way. It feels quite even. I mean, one good Chronosphere, if he has that uh, Battle Fury, uh, will be making a difference between, uh, well, Radiance between who's staying in favor. And, and like I said as well earlier, I mean, Fnatic does have the team fight going for them. Even though there's, of course, a lot of uh, disables going on for Virtus Pro, it's still the Chronosphere. If you get a good one off, there's nothing you can do, you can do against it. Not even a roar or a fiend script will do anything there. We have a mechanism up on the Chen. Battle Fury now completed up on the Faces Void, so he will have that. And he's seeping to his middle lane because he is expecting a fight there. Tier 1 Tower, last Tier 1 Tower still standing for Fnatic RC, and they do not want to lose it. Tornado going through, war going off on the Evoker, and he already dropped that. There's the Chronosphere, catches three heroes. There is even a bear able to hit up on this Morphling from the side, but Morphling was already Morphling into strength. Stun, <laughs> nice stun on three heroes right there. We have the Fiend's Grip target going down, Morphling weaving over the top, getting the last hit up on that Rubik. It is the Phase of Void that has the time lapse away from that one. Lone Druid on the run as well, and there is nothing they can do. Hand of God going through just because they can, 
and lo and behold, getting slow 50%. Does Airman want to chase that? It looks like the TA will finish her job as she will crazy picking up the kill, but is going to be moving backwards. Venomans, you are on the wrong side of the wall. You can well, actually, you can escape. I'm quite surprised. They'd rather go for the tier 2 tower than go for that Venomans, and it looks to be fairly easy, uh, easy bait. The phase is void, I mean his chronosphere, that was not enough damage to go through, he is not yet ready to fight. He needs more, and right now Morphling has it, Lincolns. He is, he doesn't need that much more. He is okay the way he is. Let's take a look at what other people are building, I mean Morphling, we are still having to see what he wants to go as secondary item. Uh, TA, Desolator, we knew that, he almost has it complete as well. Just uh, needs to get that extra money for the recipe. Bane didn't get that much uh, gold so far. I mean, he's, uh, he does have two kills for himself and, he, and four assists as well. Only died once, but uh, he's been warding and oh, he's going to be uh, finding more of <laughs> Fnatic RC. And that is the Beastmaster already dead. Invoker picking up that one. Melt damage doing a lot of damage to No Tail, but No Tail should be staying alive for now. As the Templar Assassin is going to get harassed by Faith's Void, but he is just too squishy and that test of Faith must have done max damage. Has that just obliterated, obliterated, whatever the word is, the face is void. Tornado will make sure that everybody is able to back off again. And it looked like, I mean, that fight was initiated by Fnatic, but that was not worth it. They lost the face is void again. Face is void has now died twice, has got his battle period, but doesn't have the attack speed just yet. Needs that, needs those threads to be able to have that attack speed as well. To be able to do some good with that battle fury. I mean, they did get the Beastmaster, but that is just not the most great of achievements. And that is two fights in a row going to the way of uh, Virtus Pro. And Fnatic, they can't really do that much against it right now. If they, if Virtus Pro decide to continue pushing at some point, if it lasts long enough, they might get lucky with a good Chronosphere. But right now, they just don't have the damage to deal. And this Long Druid, even though he has been farming, uh, he has not got that much. I mean, he's got a Vlad's. But that is it. He's got a couple of boots, and I mean, a couple is actually two si two pairs of boots. But it is for a lone druid. It is just not that much. We see him as a sixth on the list of the net worth, and the beastmaster that had such a rough start is even higher than the lone druid. And of course, lone druid had a rough start as well. Uh, but you would expect him to be able to get, be able to pick up some more farm halfway than uh, than the beastmaster. But it is just a uh, beastmaster that has said, Of course, one thing that we have to note is that. There are more towers down on the side of Fnatic RC than there are Virtus Pro, which will mean that there is in general more side, more gold on the side of Virtus Pro, and they pick up another tower. This time, however, it got denied, so that's uh, saved some gold, but still a tower going down, and that leaves only one tier two tower left standing up on the side of Fnatic RC, leaving their their own base to be pretty squishy if uh, Virtus Pro uh, indeed is gonna continue pushing. 2,500 gold up on that Morphling. I would like to see him go for a Manta style, by the way, just because they are being so aggressive right now, and it is a nice item to have if you're going to be that aggressive. You're going to be standing outside of the base of your opponent pretty soon, and you can just send in your illusions to be able to take care of uh, some of the tower damage. You can easily chip away some damage from the tier 3 tower, but we'll see what he's going to go for. He actually bought something. It is going to be a Manta style. He picked up a Yasha, so that is the start of his Manta style. And uh, we're gonna see uh, more people of Virtus Pro. They they know Roshan is up almost one minute ago, uh, but mm, are they gonna stand around and wait? They could do that. I mean, right now they cannot really farm this one lane, able to maybe get uh, harassed or ganked, I should say. They don't do not have any wards up here for vision on this uh, on this ground, uh, but they will defend their tower regardless. And they're even gonna be uh, meeting up with a creeper. No uh, no chankles there anymore though to take care of. In the meantime, Chen indicating that, you know what, we indeed want to push and we are going to go for Necronomica. So Necronomica on the way towards the Chen, and that indicates just uh, aggression from Virtus Pro. They know that if they wait too long, that Lone Druid and Faces Void could really give them trouble. They could, uh, if, if farmed up, I do think that based on that Chronosphere alone, they should be able to take the game. But it needs to get to that point where they have a lot of farm first, and right now they don't. They just don't. It is only 4k in favor of Virtus Pro, and I say only because that is not that much with the four ta three tower difference that they have. There's only two kills difference as well, but it just 
it, they have got they are in favor right now. If we look at the the team fights just that, that happened just now, they they are definitely ahead, and they feel that too. Uh, yeah, that, that was Roshan already, by the way. Even though the the tornado just got it out, but yeah, it's Morphling once again with the Aegis. and we actually have a gem of Druside being picked up here by this Bane to be able to counter ward. And I have to say, there was a lot to counter ward. They uh, they have wards here. These uh, did not scout out anything, by the way. Uh, but there are now a lot of wards up for Virch Pro on that map, as we see Bane placing uh, some up on the high ground there as well. Um, that one was there earlier as well already, but still. And harassment to the tower being done, and right now it's a Chronosphere what they need, and not just that, they need a Chronosphere with damage going through. Threads are now complete, so the attack speed could, could be there, potentially. This is a 5-man Chrono, by the way. This is definitely a 5-man Chrono, if that Phaser Void wants to jump in. But at the same time, Phaser Void is not even there. He's able to take care of the tower, could TP towards the bottom la mid lane. But Radachu has not to. Radha chooses to try to force out some TPs from Virtus Pro, maybe if it can push fast enough. They will be able to do that in the meantime. I mean, still 370 damage left on that tower, and it's getting less and less and less. Tornado going through EMP as well, trying to slow them down. Deafening Blast to send them on the way. It doesn't hit on the heroes. Tier 3 tower getting harassed here. Venomance actually denying the tower on the mid lane, so tower still went down. TPs are going to come in right now. And uh, we see Era also TPing out, and the roar is not going to be enough. as close, though. This hawk scouting him out. If the roar would have been there, that would have been a kill going for Virtus Pro because he was not the only one there. There was a TA as well that could have been able to be there very fast. TA actually managed to finish her Desolator as we saw that she was uh, close to that at some point, and she is also going for Mantis style. Probably the same reason as we see the Chen going for a Necronomicon, and we see the Morphling also going for Mantis style purely. They want those illusions, they want to be able to push harder, and uh, they, they need those illusions. They, ha they are fighting against three heroes that are very good at at uh, counter pushing and that is of course Tornado Invoker, Venomance Awards and of course the Rubik Fate Bolt should not be on the rest of it. At the same time Bear should not be on the rest of it either if you get some items up up on that Bear even though he is still saving. I do think that right now he's gonna go for that Radiance but it's taking a long time. Illusion. 27 minutes in right now I mean he is uh, not all too happy about that, and there, here comes Bane, they have got no word up on that high ground, so it is just a blind scout. And they're gonna continue going for this, he has his team to back him up. Ward being destroyed instantly, the gem of truth side doing work. And they just, uh, they were just passing by, simply passing by the village of the Radiant team and they picked up the creep wave and they're gonna go for the mid lane once more because there is naked barracks standing here. We do see the barracks standing here. Wow, English today seems very difficult. Uh, but we do see the Venom Master placing up some wars trying to slow it down but look at the push income and there's Necronomicons. There's not illusions yet of the Morphling as well as ZTA but there will be and this is just a lot of damage going through, and they don't even care about heroes that much. We just see Morphling going for those melee barracks, and there's the Chronosphere! Hits up for Roar off on the phases point! He did not get the Beastmaster, and that might cost them. We still see... Oh, never mind, Fiendscript gets interrupted, will it be enough? Who will win this, win this man fight? It will be Francis Boyd, but he has the Aegis. In the meantime, Beastmaster is going to go down to Ira here as well, as the TA, who drops Morphling trying to do what he can. And Venomance in the meantime drops on the side of Fnatic RC, but this team fight... Fnatic RC is showing why they picked up the face of boy. Look at that damage! Triple kill! And it was Rubik that picked up those kills, by the way. He managed to pick up a triple kill, and the only hero that did not die for Virtus Pro was a Chen. And they are gonna regret that push in. They only did half the damage of the melee barracks, and that will regenerate. And we are probably gonna see them be a bit more careful next time for the next push in and the invoker actually wants to make it a team wipe but I'm not sure that he is able to do that. The rest of his team is uh, is right behind him though. They want to try to get this tier 2 tower. Chen will be able to back ba back off into his own uh, base but this tower is not looking so fortunate. There is a fortification still up if they want to use it, if they want to delay it. But it doesn't look like they want to use it. Still off cooldown. Do they want to continue going? Nah. TA is already back up and only 9 seconds until that Morphling is back again and you do not really want to fight when you're not in favor and you do not want to fight without that Chronosphere and even though I have to say the Chronosphere started off good he had 4 people in there but he got roared inside the Chronosphere 
And that is just this is just pretty painful. But we're still able to do enough damage. I mean, those uh, those power threads really make a difference with attack speed for that battle fury, and that showed definitely showed. Uh, we have the mad star completed up on the morphling, however, he is going to be able to. Uh, to at least next time not be able to pick up all that easily because he has illusions of himself that will be able to help out. And the gold graph that we saw being in favor of Virtus Pro is now going towards favor of Fnatic once more. Again, both 5k and 2k, what it is now, is just not that, that much yet for 30 minutes in game. Experience graph, again, it's, a, it's the same story as gold graph, so I'm not even going to say it once more. Will really depend how this game is going to continue. If Virtus Pro is going to be more careful as I'm expecting they will be, or if they're just going to continue trying to do the same thing as uh, last time, now with the Mantis Alvin Morphling, because I mean the barracks did go down for a fairly large portion, but they know that the Chronosphere is on off cooldown like, again. Maybe they'll try to bait out that Chronosphere and then go for the pace. That could be the case. Although right now it looks like this Tears for Tower, last one still standing on the side of uh, Fnatic RC, might be the target. Morphling backing off, and it's got oh, it's all gonna be faces void farm right here. So that is nice for him, and he also picked up a man star. I mean, he's got a lot of ki or he got didn't get that much kills actually on this uh, on that middle lane, but did get a lot done there, and did get a lot of gold from from being there as well. He's been on 10 out of the 14 kills, that is pretty impressive for a uh, faces void. As in normally, like I said earlier this game, you do see him just being more AFK farm, but he hasn't been doing that that much. Uh, but yeah, he's got the gold, he's got 1100 gold again as well, and he's just going to continue farming. He feels pretty safe with that Chronosphere, with that time lapse. At the same time, we see Virtus Pro actually farming inside the Radiant Jungle and continuously counter warding. I mean, he did lose his gem in the previous fight, obviously, because he died. And I'm just going to check who picked it up instead of him, because it is the Venomance that picked it up. Chen now has a gem as well, by the way, so both of these teams have a gem to counterward their own stuff. And of course, for Fnatic RC, it's not only handy to counterward, it's also handy to see the TA as well as her traps, which should definitely not be underestimated as part of the farm that you can have as a team that has a TA in it. A farm, I mean, sorry, vision, control, map control. And Evoker's gonna be finding the Bane. Tornado is uh, gonna help out the Faceless Void TPing out. Well, almost missed that one, but Faceless Void will be fine. Four step out of the way with Vax being extra fast, and a Venomizer TPs out as well. Invisibility for the Invoker. And that was actually a Faceless Void escaping. And uh, yeah. Oh, let me just check for you the question from the chat came. Let's check out the bear items. Uh, we saw him picking up the, the Javelin already, and it's gonna be an MKB. And uh, he will be having a hyper soul for that as well. So that will be his item. As uh, maybe he's expecting a butterfly coming off from the morphling, and uh, just uh, just wants to have that extra damage. I mean, he knows he was too late with the radiance already. And if you're talking about counter for the TA, they have the venomancer anyway, so they don't really need that radiance for that. So it's uh, pretty decent that he has that. Of course, one thing is that he is the one that is pretty useless if he gets put inside a chronosphere, or if the chronosphere is up and there's nobody really on the edge. The bear and the lone brute, well, the bear will be quite useless. So uh, that is a bit of a downside to this hero, but at the same time, we saw Faces Void being able to put out enough damage as it is, and he's got 2100 gold already. We see him highest up on the net worth right now, Dyer's with Morphling behind him. There's attack. only 2.5k difference from uh, what I can see, well, a bit more, but 2.5k, uh, 2700 2, difference, and that is just really still not all that much, not all that much at all. Uh, Bane is actually pretty sad. Gold wise, but that's just because he's been able to just continuously ward. He just tries to continuously ward, and he does now have nice wards up. This is the thing that you can do like, you know, your opponent has a gem. And I really love his warding positions because of that. Knowing that your opponent has a gem. And, you know, normally you see teams, you know what, it doesn't work anyway putting up gems because, uh, putting up wards because, you know, the team has a gem. Smoke up, by the way, for just pro. Let's see where they're going. But uh, Virtus Pro actually warding where it is not normal to ward, and they are gonna try to find some heroes to pick off. 
It is going to be the Invoker, it's going to be the target. Uh, they did scout it out, by the way, to uh, see that Venomizer were being placed. Gale, it's on three. Venomizer ulti as well. Fiends grip up on that Invoker. Morphling doing what he can. It is the Invoker that's already dead, as well as no tail on his Rubik. But there is the Chronosphere. Picks up four, and already two dead. The rest on the run. It is the two carries, however, but they are on the run. Will he get an Entangle? That is going to be the question. Entangle would be really, really useful here. Hello, Spirit Bear. Where's your lucky Entangle? Deafening Blast going through more. There is your Entangle. I was going to say, he wasn't really lucky. Double kill for Era on this place. was Void in the fight again. Fnatic RC taking it. And it was the Invoker that balled back, by the way. Just putting this one up. Both Invoker and Rubik balled back in that fight for Fnatic RC because they did not want to miss out on that Roshan. Morphling is still up as well as the Chen for the Dire Side, but they are not going to be able to defend that with the two of them. And it looks like a pretty safe as uh, Roshan as well, even though this tornado is going to be like really annoying. It would be kind of, yeah, sorry. Faces Void picks up the ages. It was as if he wasn't hard enough to kill. I mean, he died twice at the start of the game. We have seen it. Well, I say at the start, just because he was more involved in fights than we thought he would be. Uh, but since then he hasn't really died yet. Oh, lucky bash! No roar yet for another two seconds. TP coming from the bait. Will he be dead? There's the roar. No! Lucky bash once again. No roar for you. And bye, KSI. You're going to go down to double kill for air. And this will be a tower as well. And that was just... Those bashes doing works. Morphling in the mix of all of this as well. Walter tried to still get a kill. Gets a kill as well on the Rubik, who just bought back, by the way. Cannot buy back again, but he still goes down for it. And that is not worth dying for. And the Evoker able to pick up the kill on the Morphling. And it is Fnatic RC that is pulling ahead of Virtus Pro at a rapid speed right now. They're up to 7.5k gold in favor, as well as 10k gold, 10k experience in favor. Up on that in this era, this uh, phase of Void is doing pretty well, I have to say. And there goes another tower, and they have no more towers left to take down, apart from tier 3 and tier 4 towers up on the side of the Dire. And of course, with that bear, if he does get tanky enough, he actually picked up a basher uh, first, by the way. Uh, but that bear is just uh, is, is just one power that you can set up on the tower, and you don't really have to risk your own life. But the bear, look at that bear with the leprosy on there as well. And there's the Chronos bear. They want to get the TA. Vayne locks inside of that as well. Roar still goes off. Venom has the ulti. It will be the TA that will be sent home by the Chen Beastmaster and Snare. He is still going to try to get off. Hand of God going through. It is the Beastman that was able to back off, so lucky for him. Admiral Bulldog on the way out. He's got slowed 50%. In the meantime, Faces Void. He's already out of there. Gale still goes through, and Admiral Bulldog is going to go down. TA picking up the kill. And that was slide over extension from their point of view. They shouldn't have gone in, but they went in anyway. Got the tower down to half HP, though. That is the bear. I, I am just saying it again. That bear is going to be so, so dangerous. Like I said, you can, you can stalk the base. You can make them come out for you, or force them to take a team fight, in which case you have a chronosphere. And otherwise, you can just uh, take set the bear on the tower and not really put yourself at danger. So that is just something that is just so powerful for F Fnatic RC. And there's nothing really like it on v a Virtus Pro that has it. But that is why we saw the Chen building as now Chronomicon. That is why we see Manta styles being built up by these people, even though Templar Assassin still hasn't done so. I was actually maybe looking towards uh, something else, maybe BKB. But then again, you're still going to get locked inside a Chronosphere. In Smoke Up by, uh, by Bane, it's actually... Uh, an illusion that we saw fighting there, by the way. It is, uh, I was gonna say, it is uh, the Bane, uh, sorry, the Faces Void that is gonna go back inside his base, and we see Virtus Pro looking for a target, but they cannot find it. They can just not find one. Everybody is inside the base. They know that everybody is missing from the side of Virtus Pro, and you see them being oh so careful. They know they can defend their base if they come, but they know that if they get picked off, they might not be so lucky. So good call there, as Fnatic RC now by themselves smoking up, and now are going to go do the exact same thing as we just saw Virtus Pro do. Let's see if they are more successful. We see the Faces Void taking a different route. They walk past a uh, past a ward. We see the Invoker picking up beside the Vice in the meantime. He has the cheese as well. They still have the Ages, by the way. Butterfly up on the Faces Void. So he, he is just so hard to kill right now. Chen Creep just walking past. Virtus Pro thinking they're safe, but right now we see the, we see the exact same thing coming off of Virtus Pro as Fnatic RC just did. They are hiding in their base, knowing that everybody is missing on the map, knowing that someone should be somewhere. 
and you know this is just it is the perfect smoke possibility opportunity so and they know it they smoke themselves as well and that is why we see you know them just being so careful so no team fight coming off from both these smokes and I do think that both of these teams will be going back to farming right now I mean if you look at the the strategy that Virtus Pro followed before this they tried to push in they did so twice and were not able to push in uh, to these barracks so they're gonna wait until they're getting ahead until they can pick off a kill and then go in and I do think the same thing goes for Fnatic RC they have pushed in at some point uh, also failed here at this uh, bottom lane even though they only oh hello Hello, Chrono Spear, and he picks up the TA as well, the Beastmaster, and I do think at least the Beastmaster will go down, there he goes, Hand of God going through, TA gets and snared, but it is not enough, and he will still go down, double kill for Era, and uh, still the Invoker goes down on the side to the Morphling, there goes the Bane as well, though, not, ho not home in time, not getting sent home in time, Blink from no tail, from no, not a hack, sorry, Morphling reforming over the top of the trees, and we'll be able to back out from this one, but that is a fight in favor of... And Fnatic RC once more. TA being picked up, who actually bought back. TA bought back and, and is just continuing farming right now. I mean, she wasn't able to get back into that fight. And uh, we still have a chase on, by the way. It is uh, the Rubik that wants to go for this Morphling Telekinesis as well. As the Phaser's Void right behind it wouldn't be enough. He needs some bashes, though. There's got to be help. TA is here slowing down Era 50%. Era might now be in some trouble because he d well, actually he has a Chronosphere once again. He could just pop that up. But he still has an Aegis as well. And he just man fights the Templar Assassin and gets it. And wants to go for more. There's the Manta style by the Morphling picking out the right one. Finds the right one. Will he be oh, actually why did I see that he had a I had a chronosphere? Did I click on the wrong ah I clicked on an illusion. Confusing, he of course didn't have a chronosphere, he had just used it. That's why I was confused. Like super short cooldown. Anyway, he still man fights that CA gets her gets her down. Morphling able to back out, so that is something good for Virtus Pro, because that should be the ki the person that is gonna carry them to victory against his uh, against his faceless void, but this faceless void is starting to get pretty out of hand and even Morphling cannot just stand there and fight him. A man fight would, reser re would result into Faces Void winning, unless he's of course very, very unlucky and doesn't get any bashes off, but you know, that's not the tier that you want to go for. And again, we see the same thing. Uh, this is one of those periods of time where teams are looking for a kill, looking for a pickoff, uh, but Fertus Pro not finding anything with their smoke. Smoke from uh, Fnatic RC not working out as well. I'm not working out either, and actually, actually, whoa, Invoker, run, you better run, now he sees them, and they're gonna back off, Tornado will slow them down, but they're actually not even thinking about chasing, knowing that they would not be put in a good position, because look at that, there's already support there, and Faceless Void, even though he's quite far behind, he now does have his uh, Chronosphere up once more, and they don't even need the Faceless Void, Telekinesis, Bane getting gilded as well, as well, Bane, he is gonna go down here for sure, it is Rubik that picks up the last hit, we see, uh, we see Era there from the side, and there's the Chronosphere, and the Morphling this time in it, it's gonna be the first beast of the fir first, no roar for you, Morphling next, will be in time, look at those bashes, double kill for Era, and the push continues, they have not got the creep wave though, creep wave is pretty far back, but they, well actually they're gonna wait for that, but three kills, Morphling buying back, something that desperately needed, otherwise that would have cost them a barracks, Templar Assassin still in there as well though, he, she's waiting around the corner, and actually, since the last time we saw her picking up that Manta style, uh, she does now have the Manta style, she has not been able to get that much from. She died nine times. Let's put that up for a second right there. I mean, Morphling only died three times. His face of Void still only two. He's level 24 right now. Massive difference compared to the rest. I mean, four levels difference up to the other hard carry that is a Morphling. Fable just picking off a Linking Sphere. And the bear doing works. And there is the time lapse in my chat, you're dead! And then who's the next target? It's gonna be the Templar Assassin gets turned into a pig and is dead as well. Gem drops on the floor, but who cares about the gem? Morphling doing what he can, but will he be in time? Will he be able to do something? Roar going off on the face of Void. He still has an Aegis though, he doesn't care. Deafening Blast going through, and he is just moving into the bay. Will he be able to get it? Another Miner Sun. He's gonna be able to get that as well. We see the Morphling being picked up, getting ensnared. He's got trying to make it into the base, and he's not gonna make it! Not a hack! Fable picking up the kill, the GG well played gets cold, and it is Fnatic RC that's winning over Virtus Pro in this Star Series match between Virtus Pro and Fnatic RC. And I have to say, when we saw the draft, I mean, up until that last point of Fnatic RC, 
I, I did not think, I mean, there was a Morphling and a TA on one side, two heroes that we have known for winning games. But then the last pick, that faceless void, made it all come true, made it all happen. I have to say, brilliant pick from that brilliant play, and or at least good, te good team uh, teamwork, and yeah. It is uh, definitely faceless void, MVP, or at least MVH, most valuable hero in this match. Still a Chronosphere, just because he can, so that he is the only one that gets the last up on the throne. Uh, my name is Shiva, I am a Ghost of Gamers caster, and once more reminding you that this, or I am not an official caster for Star Series. If you want to see an official cast, go to OWN TV. Uh, for this match, however, there was no official English cast, so I figured I'd cast it anyway. Um, I will be casting other ca Star Ladder matches as well, the ones that are not casted by Toby I will cover, so that there is English commentary on uh, here as well, and... You can subscribe to my YouTube, youtube.com slash Gaming. You really help me if you do so because I'm aiming to get 5k subscriptions. So let's just see what uh, match we'll have up next and uh, stay tuned for more Dota 2 action coming right up.